In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to continue our practice of functional analysis by sketching a graph of the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3. This may sound more simple and straightforward than the problems that we've been doing before, but it's going to be the same rigor. We're going to need to find the first and second derivatives to determine the minimums, maximums, intervals of increasing and decreasing, our concavities and our flexion points, and then really we also want to determine where we cross the x-axis to. So it's actually a little bit more involved. We'll start off by sending the, setting the function equal to zero to find where we cross the x-axis, which is pretty clearly going to occur at x equals zero. Because we don't have an x in the denominator anywhere, we're not going to have any vertical asymptotes and we're not really going to have any horizontal asymptotes in this problem either. So we're done with the original function. Let's go on and let's find the first derivative. This will be 4 thirds x to the third. And we'll need to set that equal to zero to determine our critical points, which again is going to occur at x equals zero. We take our critical points and we set up a table to determine where we're increasing and where we're decreasing. And we take some test values, say negative 1 and positive 1, and we put them into our first derivative. So f prime of negative 1 is equal to 4 thirds negative 1 to the third power, which is equal to negative 4 thirds. So we're negative, which means we're decreasing f prime of positive 1 is 1 to the third power is pretty clearly going to equal 4 thirds. It'll be positive, that means we're increasing. So, when you go from decreasing to increasing, you have a minimum. So x equals 0 is going to equal a minimum. And it also nicely occurs where it crosses the x-axis, so it's going to actually be the point 0, 0 is our minimum. Now let's go on and find our second derivative to determine our concavity. This is going to equal 4x squared. We set that equal to 0, and that's going to occur at x equals 0 as well. So we need to set up a table, much like we did for the first derivative, and we'll pick some test values. And we can use recycle negative 1 and positive 1 again for this case. And notice because this is x squared, doesn't matter what value we're going to put into it, when you square it, it's always going to be positive on the other side. So that means we're going to be concave up from negative infinity to zero and concave up from zero to positive infinity. So there is no inflection points. Uh, all right, now let's take all this information we have and let's sketch the graph. We cross the x-axis at only one point, x equals zero, which also happens to be a minimum. We are decreasing before that. We're increasing after that. And over the course of the entire graph, we are concave up. So that's really all the information we need. We just know that our graph is going to look something along this line then. And the relative shape is kind of irrelevant when you're doing a sketch. You could have very easily drawn it to look like this, or it could have been peakier, or it could have been, say, gradual on one side, and then incredibly steep on the other side. But this is the relative detail right there. It's curving, it's concave up everywhere, it's decreasing until you get to zero, it's increasing afterwards, and the minimum occurs at zero, zero.